day two peas. Today's topic is equations and our goal I can solve linear equations in one or two steps. So we're going to get deep into the algebra again here and we're going to start off simple with one and two step linear equations. When we solve an equation we are finding the value of an unknown number. That number is represented by a letter in the equation. So if I ask you to solve this x plus 6 equals 10. What I want is for you to give me the number that goes with 6 to make 10. Now there will only be one possibility and hopefully that you can get it very quickly for this one. Um, even though this one is pretty easy to do in your head, hopefully all of you know that 4 goes with 6 to make 10. Our math goal is to get the x completely by itself. To do this, we need to get rid of everything in our way by doing the opposite of what it's doing. And remember that adding is the opposite of subtracting and multiplying is the opposite of dividing and vice versa. So we're going to take a look at that equation I gave you up top and do it the mathematical way. Think of this as being a balancing act. Everything here is on a scale and it's balanced at that equal sign. So we have two different sides of this equation split in half by that equal sign there. And what we want to do is keep it, uh, keep that scale balanced. So I have to get x completely by itself. I first ask myself, what is stopping that x from being completely by itself? And the answer to that is, well, this plus 6. It's being added to the x and so to get rid of it I have to do the opposite. Since it's being added to the x the opposite of that would be to subtract. Now if I just subtract 6 on that side then that side gets lighter and my scale goes whoop because the other side is heavy and so to set it back upright again I have to subtract 6 from that side and as soon as I subtract 6 from that side my balance is restored. So what is, what do I get on this side when I subtract 6? I get x and on the other side when I subtract 6 I get 4 which was what we came up with before uh, when we were just looking at it by speculation you know that 4 goes with 6 to make 10. This is just the mathematical way of doing it because not all of them are going to be as easy as x plus 6 equals 10. So we're going to think of that scale as a balance. And in order to keep that balance in check, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. And that is actually our golden rule of algebra. Dun, 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 dun. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you must also do exactly the same thing to the other in order to keep the balance in the equation. So we're going to try a few here. We're going to solve for x in these equations. If you take a look at the first one, it says x minus 8 equals 20. And the first thing you want to ask yourself is, I have to get x by itself. Why isn't x all by itself already? And the answer to that is we have this minus 8 that's stopping it from being by itself. So in order to get rid of the minus 8, I have to do the opposite. The opposite of subtracting 8 is adding 8. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side to restore the balance of the equation. Remember the golden rule of algebra, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So now this side just has an x on it, and the other side is 20 plus 8, or 28. Now we can do a quick little check to see if we're right. On the left side of that equation was x minus 8 and on the right side of that equation was 20. And so when I fill in this value for x in the left side and do the math, I hope that I add up end up with the same thing on the other side. And in this case, I do. My left side equals my right side, which means that I found the right answer. Okay, so moving on to the other one. What is stopping x from being completely by itself on that side of the equation? And the answer in this case is we've got this 5 hanging on to the x. And it's hanging on tight. It's multiplying that x. How do we get rid of something that's multiplying? We do the opposite, of course. We divide by 5 since it's being multiplied by 5. And then these 5s cancel because 5 divided by 5 is just one plain old x. So, 
we still have to restore the balance of the equation though we have to divide the other side by five as well and that gives us x equal to four and if you take a look back at the original equation five times something equals 20 well five times four equals 20 so it looks like i've got the right answer there too the next one we have x being divided by seven the opposite of dividing is multiplying. So to get rid of that divide by 7, I'm going to multiply by 7. So on this side, we have uh, the 7's cancel. And on the other side, I have 7 times 63, which our answer is 441. Okay, now we're going to look at linear equations that have two steps that maybe aren't as easy to look at in your head. So two-step linear equations, we're going to solve for x in 12 equals 3x plus 36. Now this process is still a balancing act. We just have more things to get rid of. And so we're going to start by getting the term with the x in it completely by itself. So in this case, I have to say, what's stopping my x term? Now here's the x term. The 3 is part of the x term. So I have to get this thing by itself first. And, of course, it's this 36 here that's bothering it. I need to subtract 36 in order to get rid of it. But if I subtract 36 on that side, I also have to subtract 36 on this side. So my equation, I've got 3x completely by itself on this side. And then on this side, if I put negative 36 and positive 12 together, remember the 12 positives will cancel out 12 of those negatives, and I'm left with negative 24. Now I want to get x completely by itself. I've got the term with x by itself. I need to just get x by itself. And of course, to do that, I need to divide because it's being multiplied by 3. So I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. So on this side of the equation, I'm left with only a single x because 3 divided by 3 is just 1. So I just have 1x, and I don't write the 1 beside it. That gets too cluttered. And negative 24 divided by 3 is negative 8. So x is negative 8. And I can do a little check, a left side, right side check. If I look at it, I know the left side of my equation is 12. And on the right side of my equation, this one here, I have 3x plus 36. Now I want to check to see if x really is negative 8. So I'm going to shove negative 8 in where the x is. And then I'm going to do the math. So 3 times negative 8 is negative 24 plus 36. And negative 24 plus 36 is 12, which is what I was supposed to get. Because now both of my both sides of my equation are the same. They both balance. I say left side equals right side. Yippee, I got the right answer. Now we're going to do a few more of those. I'll talk you through them. Now here's the first one, 3x plus 2 equals 17. Remember we want to get the term with x completely by itself to start with. In order to get the term completely by itself, I have to subtract 2 on both sides of the equation. Now those 2's over here are going to disappear and I'm only left with that 3x. And on the other side I have 15 because 17 minus 2 is 15. Now I want to get the x the x completely by itself so I do the opposite of what that 3 is doing which is multiplying the x I divide to get rid of it so those 3's go away and I'm left with just an x on this side and on the other side 15 divided by 3 is 5 looking at the next question 38 equals 5x minus 2 so I have to get the term with x by itself first. So I have to say, what's stopping this 5x from being by itself? And the answer to that is that negative 2. So I add 2 to both sides. When I add 2 to, to this side over here, I get 40. When I add 2 to the other side, that just goes away, and I'm left with a 5x. Now I have to get the x completely by itself first. So I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides of the equation. 
So this side is simply x, and the other side I have to do 40 divided by 5, which gives me 8. So x is equal to 8. And our last question, 3x divided by 4 equals 15. I want to get the term that has x in it completely by itself first. So in order to get the term that has x in it completely by itself, I have to get rid of this 4. It's bothering me. So to get rid of a divide by 4, I multiply by 4. And if I multiply by 4 on that side, I have to multiply by 4 on the other side. So those 4s cancel, and I have 3x equals 15 times 4 is 60. Now that I have my x term completely by itself, now I have to get the x completely by itself, and I'm going to divide both sides by 3 in order to do that. I, this 3 cancels with this one, and I'm left with just an x on the bottom, and 3 goes into 60 20 times. Now we have one word problem to go through before the end of this lesson. Example 3, the cost of producing the school yearbook is a $500 fixed cost, cost plus $10 for each book ordered. An equation that shows this relationship is C equals 5,000 5, plus 10N. So this 5,000 represents the fixed cost, and the 10 is our unit rate, the cost of one book. This is called, well, won $6,500 in a lottery and decided to put it towards the yearbooks for the school. How many books could she buy with that amount of money? So you have to ask yourself, I know that I need this equation. That equation is going to help me out somehow. I just have to figure out what I'm going to do with that $6,500. Well, that $6,500 is how much I have to pay for everything. So it's a cost. It's not an N. The N is the number of books ordered. So I'm going to put $6,500 in for cost and see how many books I can order for that price. So the first thing I have to do is get the term that has the N in it or has the variable in it by itself. And the thing that's stopping it in this case is this 5,000. So I have to subtract 5,000. But if I subtract 5,000 there, I have to subtract 5,000 on this side as well. So I'm left with 1,500 over on this side, and I just have that 10N on this side. And now to find out the number of books that Mrs. Caldwell can order, I need to divide both sides by 10 to figure out what that n is and it looks like I can purchase 150 books for that amount of money. So we need a therefore statement, therefore she can buy 150 books. And lastly, how much would the total bill be if everyone, all 375 of us, wanted to purchase a yearbook? Well, this is a number of yearbooks purchased. So that is an N. And they are asking us for how much, which suggests to me that they want a cost. So C equals 5,000 plus 10 times N. But we know what N is in this case. It's 375, so we have 5,000 plus 3,750, so it looks like I'm paying $8,750 for everybody in this school to get a yearbook. So it would cost... $8,750 for everyone to get a yearbook. And that concludes the lesson for today.